Welcome. This is uh, 49A9. It's the last part of this first chapter. And this is called Damped and Driven Oscillations. Um, so what we're we talking about here? We're talking about a situation where because of friction, energy is taken out of the system. And that means that um, we're going to see a decrease in the amplitude. Remember, uh, we said that uh, the mechanical energy equals one half. What do we say? K a squared. If the mechanical energy decreases because of frictional losses, then k is not going to change, and a half is not going to change. The a must change. And so the amplitude gets less and less. You can see this if we take an oscillator and we put it actually into a beaker of viscous liquid. We'll see that the oscillation starts off quite healthy, but then as time passes, it diminishes. Um, it's kind of interesting um, predicting how quickly it will diminish, etc. And what engineers often do is they make systems so that they uh, have a certain amount of damping. Uh, for example, if, if we had ideal springs in our cars and we went over a, a pothole, then the car would oscillate forever after going over that pothole. We, we couldn't make that, but we wouldn't want that either. On the other hand, if we had no springs, then we'd feel every bump in the road. So we'd like a kind of oscillation where rather than the... I'm going to get my uh, rather than the car oscillating backwards and forwards even though it's diminishing in its amplitude we'd like it to come to rest as quickly as possible we call that critical damping it's it's the quickest it's it's the shortest time period it's the damping that gives us the shortest time period for the uh, oscillator when it's displaced from equilibrium to return to equilibrium without overshooting. If we put too much damping in the system then we'll get this again it will return to equilibrium but we'll do it very slowly and so we tend not to want uh, an under damped system because we will feel the oscillations backwards and forwards and we don't want an over damped system because it will take a long time to return to equilibrium. We often want a critically damped system. So we say in real systems, the force of friction causes damping. The force due to friction is given by F is equal to minus a constant times the velocity. Now that's interesting because if we say that the uh, um, F is equal to say minus Kx, the spring, uh, 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 the Hooke's law, we have a, a, a term that depends upon position and a term that depends upon what dx by dt. And so we're getting set up for basically differential equations, which is beyond the scope of what we, we care about. But look forward to that, because if you do mechanical engineering, you'll, you'll get into that. And you'll be able to fine-tune these systems based on their properties. Um, we say, uh, so basically, one of the skills I'd like you to have for this bit is I'd like you to be able to look at these diagrams and be able to name them. So I'll be able to recognize that's an under damp system because it goes beyond the equilibrium situation. This is a critically damp system because it returns to equilibrium as quickly as possible. And this is an over damp system because it takes a long time to return to equilibrium. And then another thing I'd like you to get is that in a simple harmonic system, we can drive it at a driving frequency. I can, I can shake something. And in the absence of damping, if an oscillator is driven at its natural frequency, the frequency that it normally wants to oscillate at, for a mass and a spring, that natural frequency is determined by, well, it's determined by omega is equal to the square root of k over m so it's determined by the spring constant and it's determined by the mass of the oscillator 
So there's physicality determines its natural frequency. If I drive a system at its natural frequency, then what happens is I push when the system is moving away from me and I pull when the system is moving towards me. I'm in sync with the natural frequency of the oscillator. And so what I find is I put more and more energy into the system. I say in the absence of damping, if an oscillator is driven at its natural frequency, the system resonates because more and more energy is stored inside the system. The amplitude gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, this is indicated by an increase in the oscillation amplitude, which indicates the increase in stored energy. This can be really quite fascinating. You can, you can take a, a, um, a driver and you can drive lower frequency than the natural frequency and it's like the object ignores you and you can drive at a higher frequency than the natural frequency and the object ignores you but if you drive at that natural frequency you will see the oscillator the object with the natural frequency if you shake it at the right frequency it will shake and have bigger and bigger amplitudes as time passes so this page is is conceptual there's no math in this but you know, I'm not above asking you conceptual questions if you're in my class. So there we have it.